Hi everybody, Matt here from CSL Silicones. Today we're going to be learning about how to coat and execute on projects for glass disc insulators. We're going to show you how to set up, what type of equipment to use, and how to get the most efficient way of doing your project. Uh, you're going to need some clean uh, rags. You're going to need some gloves. Uh, just some regular masking tape as well. You're going to need some type of solvent. Here today we're using uh, isopropyl alcohol. You can also use acetone, but basically we're looking for anything that's going to remove grease as well as flash off completely so you don't leave any type of residue on the surface of the insulator. So first thing you're going to want to do is put on a pair of gloves. Even if you have um, any oils on your hands, that can contaminate the insulator surface. So once you start cleaning, once you start doing your surface preparation, it's always very important to make sure you're wearing gloves whenever using these coatings. So what you're going to want to do is have clean rags and dirty rags. Um, the dirty rags you're going to want because um, to remove all the uh, grease, dust, contaminants that come on these insulators. Now every so often when you have these you can have issues with having some of the potting cement on top of the glass or porcelain surface. Just do your best to try to remove anything that's loose, anything that can be chipped off with a uh, dull putty knife. Go ahead and remove that. If something's tightly adhering and you're worried you're going to damage the insulator surface, um, whether that's on glass or porcelain, if you're worried about that, then go ahead and leave it and we're just going to coat right on top of it. So we're going to go ahead and start cleaning this insulator. Uh, basically, what we're doing here is just removing anything that got on it during shipping. Uh, we're going to want to make sure that every surface is um, clean. We want to make sure that it's free of uh, grease. That you might not be able to see and like I said before we want to keep our fingerprints off it so uh, from now on you're always going to be wanting to wear gloves for the cleaning process you can also wash these in a bath uh, soap and water sometimes that works if you're doing lots if you noticed I have one rag here this is going to be my dirty rag this is removing most of the um, particles, dirt, and contamination. So once the insulator is fairly clean and looks good, you're going to want to get your clean rag and you're going to want to give it one final spray and wipe just to make sure there's no moisture on the surface that's going to evaporate with the uh, rubbing alcohol and give it one last clean wipe. Now the insulator is clean. So the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do once your insulator has been cleaned is you're gonna to wanna to mask off the areas that don't need any coating on them. Those are gonna be uh, slightly above the zinc sleeve on the pin, and that's gonna be slightly above uh, the division line between the glass and the cap. Get a small piece of tape and we're going to wrap that just below the edge of that zinc sleeve. And then we're going to continue our way up the top. This doesn't need to look perfect. Uh, basically, we're going to want to do it uh, so it's comfortable and can be done fairly fast if you have quite a few of these to do. So as you can see, part of that zinc sleeve is still exposed. We're gonna to wanna to be able to coat up it um, about 80% of the way. Next, you're gonna to want to do the uh, cap. We're gonna to wanna to coat about five centimeters up the start of that cap, and then we're gonna contain the rest of it with tape. So you're gonna to wanna to wrap around and then cover, cover the rest of your insulator with tape. 
Now that the insulator is uh, taped, we're ready to go start the coating process and we'll show you how to set up for that. So now we're ready to start coating the insulators. What we recommend is you set up saw horses such as this um, with some PVC pipe to be able to support the insulators. That's going to allow for uh, easy and quick changeover from doing one side and easy to flip to do the other side. This is going to keep everything secure. Now if you need to do hundreds or thousands of these insulators, multiple sawhorses can be set up at once in a large room such as a factory or a Quonset hut and you're going to be able to speed through this quite fast. Um, this is going to allow for easy movement between uh, the insulators and really it's just getting in the habit of walking back and forth. So you can set them up to each be able to accommodate one string or you can have hundreds of these set up where you can walk back and forth and it'll prevent you needing to wait any uh, length of time for uh, putting on a second coat. So next what you're going to want to do is open um, the pail of coating and we're going to inspect it to make sure there's no is issues with the coating. So what you'll notice when you first open the can is there's going to be some polymer on top. And what we're going to want to do is mix that in for about five minutes. We just use a standard Jiffy mixer until all the coating has been fully mixed together. All the solids off the bottom have been mixed as well as the polymer that's settled on top. Once you have your pump set up, <clears throat> You're going to want to make sure you have a good fan pattern uh, with your gun. Uh, with any of CSL's products um, and our HVIC products, usually we recommend uh, anywhere between a 13 thou and a 17 thou tip. It's going to give you a nice fan pattern um, and it's going to give you a lot of control with what you're painting. Um, now for the top sides of these insulators, I like to use a 517 tip. Um, and then when I do the other side, that's when I switch to a 315 uh, for a little less product and a little more control. So now that we're ready to start uh, coating our cleaned insulators, these are the ones we did earlier. Uh, what we're going to do is first check out our specification so that we know how much uh, product needs to go on the insulators. Generally, that's between 250 and uh, 500 microns is what we want as a dry film thickness. So depending on the product we're using, we're going to have to see how much wet film thickness we're going to put on there. Generally what we're going to do before is do a test spray on a flat surface and then check it with a wet film gauge. That's going to give you an idea of how many passes you're going to need to do on each insulator to put on the correct amount of uh, product. I typically find for myself at the speed that I work, it's going to be roughly um, three full passes and then a separate faster pass. Then normally what I'm going to do is go back and see if there's any spots I missed and just do a quick touch up. I want to make sure there's a nice coating between the uh, insulator and the cap to make sure there's no spots that are missed. So these look pretty good. Uh, again, that was three regular passes for me and then one uh, quick pass. That's basically going to put on um, around 600 microns for me. Again, everyone is different depending on the speed that they work at. So you'll have to gauge and get the feel for yourself to be able to put on the correct amount of coating. So now that the tops have been coated, what we're going to want to do is flip them. You want to make sure you wait significant, uh, sufficient enough amount of time um, that allows you to flip them without all the coating sagging off. Uh, so these have been left for about five minutes. Again, if you have uh, hundreds or thousands of these to do, by the time you get back to the beginning, you're going to be able to flip them quite easily. They could also be dry at that point. 
So it is easier the more of these you have set up. So the more tops you do at once, and then you can swap over and do the ridge side. So now we're going to flip these into their holders. And what you'll notice is the holder is cut so that the uh, cap doesn't go all the way to the bottom. That prevents the cup from touching the insulator's painted surface, so it's sitting above. So when we're looking to coat the ridge surface of an insulator, we need to look at it kind of differently. We don't want to concentrate on the edge of the ribs because coating's naturally going to build up there. We're going to want to come in at an angle to allow proper coverage on the sides. So we're going to not pay too much attention to the bottom or the top because those are naturally going to fill with coating. The final step is to make sure that this ridge here is completely coated. Uh, it should have a fair bit of coating because of uh, just the overspray and getting hit, but you're going to want to make sure that there's no glass showing. So once your coatings have reached this stage, you're going to want to let them dry here for roughly 12 hours. It's another good thing about having these stands, especially if you have multiples of them. It allows you to just leave them and come back and collect them later. Now once they've cured, your insulators are going to look like this. You're going to want to remove the pin and cap tape. You're going to want to do your quality control checks to make sure that you have the specified thickness. Again, generally recommended that a dry film thickness with CSL's 570 product is going to be between 380 and 500 microns. You're going to want that as an average over the entire surface. So whether that's this side or inside the ribs, uh, minimum we like to see is about 180 microns. Generally, that's going to happen here where it's very difficult to coat. So once you've removed uh, your tape and from your cap and your pin, you're going to be able to restring your insulator strand and either put them into packaging or you're going to be able to string them up on the line. So thank you for watching our video on how to coat uh, glass porcelain insulators. Uh, I hope you learned something. I hope you found it informative. Uh, and stay tuned for more videos about some of our other products that will be coming up. Thanks a lot. Bye.